I'm nervous. <sighs> because what we're trying to do is when the door opens for the bigger chickens, we want the little chickens to just be in their coop. Like, yeah, they're totally supposed to be in here because we're one family. And I'm hoping that if they see each other coming out of the same house today, they'll be nicer, hopefully. So I'm wondering, should we open the door now and let them just be there? Or should we wait until it actually opens? I think we have to time it so that when it actually opens, I'm opening the door. So like, they've got a head start. They're not trapped in there with them, but <laughs> they're together. Here we go. All right. What's happening? I let you hear them jump down. Oh, great. Look who the first one out is. Good morning, Naomi. She's like, what are you doing in my house? Get a drink of water. The other three are like, oh no. <laughs> They're like, be super still and quiet and no one will notice you're there. I like watching them jump down. Both feet. You stuck the landing. Hi, Bessie. This isn't how they normally come out. It's like they know. You know, something, something's up. Why are you just standing here? Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Hi, Bess. Who's missing? Aww. Abigail's in the box. Of course. Well, oh, we're missing Shiloh. Shiloh, wake up. Good morning. I am sure that Abigail is not letting Shiloh lay eggs by herself. No, of course not. Are they both in the box? They're both in the same box. So... Poor, Sh poor Shiloh has to lay her egg with a friend. So I think they'll eventually integrate. I mean, you got three on one side of the yard, three on the other side of the yard. Um, I think they'll eventually come together, but at least uh, like they're not hurting each other. I really want them to come together <laughs> right now over me. Uh, are they coming back over? I have tried to provide so much food distraction over there that the big chickens are ha are happy. Thank you. You're welcome. We have an intro to do. Mm. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. What are you doing? Um, this is the smaller cup. Well, yeah, but we want everybody to see like what's on the mug. Oh, so this is stay warm so and shower on. You just automatically get that mug because you chose to sit on that side. Oh, because the handle's over here? Yeah. It's like a lefty handle. I'll, I'll be nice. I'll be nice. I'll take the smaller cup of coffee. I will sacrifice for you. Aw, I appreciate that. So we got up this morning. Um, it was actually a late morning for us, which is good. We need to get more sleep. That's the biggest thing that we're lacking right now is sleep. We literally went to bed. We, we tried that the smoked bacon that we had last night. We had a few pieces. We've closed out yesterday's vlog. Went to watch Jaws for the third night in a row. And fell asleep, what, 20 minutes in? I think during an attack. Like someone is screaming mm -hmm. and getting all chewed up by a shark. And I'm like, good night. <laughs> like I was fine with it. So it's interesting. I miss the flavor of my night-night juice, but I am not 
not sleeping. I am not experiencing insomnia. Right. There is right. something beautiful about protein. I do notice whenever we, you know, eat a, a heavy protein meal, mm -hmm. I, I usually want to take a nap right. afterwards. So when I eat some protein, which is pretty much what we're eating, I mean, in fat, right. then I go to sleep and I sleep well. Yeah. And normally we wake up at six o'clock, but I didn't have any cutting today. I'm waiting for my iPhone. We're waiting for our iPad. And uh, I got a bunch of video editing. You gotta finish up Fearless Friday. So we set the alarm for 7.15 because at 7.30 the chicken coop opens up and we went out there and the babies actually slept. I checked, I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning and uh, I checked on them and the babies were sleeping on the ramp. Right. Because they don't have an upper would. roost. And uh, they, it was cool to see that the baby chickens have figured out how to use the automatic feeder, so the automatic water. Mama's so proud. You're proud. But we didn't want to put them up in the top yeah. because I was afraid it would become like a murder box. Right. And I didn't want that to happen, but I wanted them to continue hearing each other mm -hmm. through the night and I, the baby still be protected. And then our, our goal was open up the box and as the the older chickens they're come down, there. they're just there. You've kind of seen them around. Now they're now they're in your environment. Yeah. And it worked. I mean, it opened up and they came down. And uh, which one was it? Ah, uh, who came down first? I don't even remember. I want to say that the the one that we're the most nervous about, Naomi, was the first out oh, of the right. gate. She's our Brahma, and the, you know they're supposed to be the super friendliest. She's very like territorial. She's probably at the top of the pecking order, and so yeah, she's the bully. But she just came down and was like, I'm going to eat food. I'm just, I just want to eat food. She's very food motivated. And <laughs> kind of sounds like familiar, huh? And uh, I'm not a bully though. No, no. At one point they got trapped in the corner and then they just kind of ran out because they're faster. That is a, that's a plus. And now they're all out there. There is a lot of room. The babies are staying near the hen house, but that is a lot for them to explore. This is their first time really outside. So they have most of the backyard or half of the backyard and they're staying there. The other ones are kind of wandering around doing their digging and their, you know, scavenging and stuff like that. So we're going to see how it goes. So a little bit of a busy day. Um, I'm waiting for my iPhone. I've got some videos to edit. We have some other work to do. We're going to try to film Keto on the Couch today instead of on Saturday because I have late games tomorrow. Right. What do you have on the schedule? I have... Um... Fearless Friday to finish. We're going to be taping Kid on the Couch. And then my daughter saw me working out on Instagram and called me and said, I'm proud of you. Like, oh, really? I see I see you doing this. And she is has been a CrossFit trainer mm -hmm. for a long time. And she's like, would you mind if I made a workout for you to do? And at first I was like really scared. My immediate reaction was like, oh, it's going to be too hard. I'm not going to be able to do it. Because she's a CrossFit trainer. And you know, because I'm thinking anybody who is in CrossFit is here and, and I'm here. Right. You know, and I thought, no, I'm, she wants to do this. Mm -hmm. She has faith in me. Why don't I have faith in me? Right. So I was like, yeah. So, so I, we talked about the different equipment that we have in the house and she's customized something for me. And I thought that's a real gift that she wants me to live. She yeah. wants me to be my best self and I feel like I can do this. I'm proud of you. I can do this. I think this is really awesome. So we were talking this morning and that we've gravitated back towards one meal a day. Yeah. Which I don't think is a good thing. And because I feel like we're, it, the protein is so filling. So you're, it's filling you up and then you don't want to eat, and then you pair that with the last couple of days we've been eating later in the day. Right. So, again, Dr. Barry said eat as much as you want, but only of beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. And so what we're going to do is I think we're going to try to eat a little bit earlier, or we're going to start off with a small breakfast. Maybe a just idea. a couple of eggs or something like that. Kind of get us going for the day. And then you're going to just want to eat later on, not eat a giant meal a day. So eat, eat a meal later on in the day. But like I found yesterday, I got three quarters of the way through my plate and I'm like, oh, I really don't, I can't eat anymore. But at the same point, I knew I would want to eat later. And I knew that this was our first meal and could be our only meal. So I kind of forced myself. Whereas... 
if we were to eat a little bit of something in the morning, like maybe in a little while, well, you're doing the Fearless Friday, which if you don't know what Fearless Friday is, it's a weekly post that Rachel puts up for our Patreon members. Mm -hmm. And it's really awesome and inspirational, and I absolutely love reading it. Thanks, honey. Um, so maybe I'll just go make a couple of eggs and like like an omelet, like a brisket omelet, and then we can Hello. eat later on. Uh, I have a football game tonight, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Because your foot is really bothering you. My, my, my right foot, not my left foot. My left foot with all the arthritis, that one doesn't hurt. But I think over the years of, of compensating, every once in a while my right foot hurts, but it's like on the side of my foot. If I can bring it up here, it's like right in here and it's like bruised. You'd think that somebody stepped on it, but nobody stepped on it. So I don't know if I stepped and rolled or right. did something. It's kind of black and blue. It hurts. If I put on a shoe, it's a little bit better. But without my shoes on, I can barely walk. So we're going to ice it. And then we're going to see how I feel at noon. And then I'm going to make a decision on my game. But I don't want to, like, I don't want to screw the assigner. You don't want to let anybody down. Yeah. That's always a concern. Because we're already short a lot of officials. And I we don't do want to best. let down my crew. But I also don't want to hurt myself. And I have four games tomorrow and three games on Sunday. So it, we're going to see how it goes. But we have a lot to go. Any thoughts on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs before we... Or beef... Yeah, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. We keep saying it different ways. All different ways. But all the same ingredients still, no matter how you switch them up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really enjoying it. I agree with you that we need to space out some of the food and try getting it all instead of getting it all in one i think that that is kind of the spirit of the challenge too yes and i think that i also need some time with smaller meals mm -hmm. because i do eat so much in a sitting normally mm -hmm. i'm 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 the person that you you make an omad for right. because i can eat a lot and then um, I can get in my mind, it's not food time. Right. So when it's food time, I want to eat a big over mounded plate of food. And when it's not food time, I'm like, okay, I'm fine. Right. But I need to, to have a plate of food that is a small food, you know, small plate and not have a feeling of like, that's it. Right. You know? Right. And the other thing is, is that I think that doing an OMAD... It, it, I think it adds to our food insecurity. Right. Because we're so afraid that we're going to overeat. Let's just do it all in one meal and then you won't overeat your calories. But like you said, the whole spirit of this is you can't overeat and you can't gain a bunch of fat if you're eating these four things. Right. But part of it was as much as you want as many times of the day as you want. And that is one thing that I think we need to get back into is it's okay to have two meals. It's okay to have three meals if you're eating the right things. And after spending a weekend with Bronson and a weekend with Steve from Keto Chow, yeah. they eat. Yeah, they do. Right? And they wake up and they eat breakfast and they look pretty good. They look fantastic. And I'm interested to see... Because we'll sit down to, to our one meal and mm -hmm. maybe I'll have three hamburger patties. Maybe I'll have, you know, a, a bunch of the bacon wrapped um, steak and I will finish all of that. But I'm wondering if I had two meals and it was one hamburger patty per, per thing, mm -hmm. per meal, would I find that I am still full? Yeah. Or is it that I'm, I'm trying to find places in my stomach to, to put all of this food? Would I be comfortably full, totally satiated with a smaller amount of food. Right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try, uh, we're going to try to have a few meals today since we're home together at one thirty or one, we have to leave here at like 1245 to get to the Apple store in Boca Raton to pick up our iPad mini. Okay. Then we're going to hand off the other iPad to Anthony. That's our studio iPad. So we need yeah. that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is try to head over. I have a couple of Amazon returns. I have to get dropped off at Whole Foods, which is right next door to Sam's Club, and hope I can find a couple of steak deals because the only Good place luck. we may be able to afford steak is from Sam's Club. But we also need to get a bunch of burgers because everybody's coming over here for a barbecue on Sunday. I think that if the prices keep going up, we're just going to be buying carnivore crisps and handing everybody that. Like, here's your steak, kids. Well, here's the good thing. Ground beef is still pretty cheap. I mean, 
A ribeye may be $18 a pound, but ground beef is still down between $2 and $4 a pound. And listen, ground beef, it's good for you. You talk to Bronson, he eats ground beef and ground turkey. That's what he eats. He's like, I, I like it. Actually and there's love, a lot you can do with it. I love hamburgers. I am really enjoying the hamburgers off of the Kamado Joe. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it because I like the flavor of that charcoal type yeah. of burger. That feels like... You know, backyard barbecue, how I grew up, my that's how my parents cook. And it's funny because you love smoked meat, but when it comes to hamburgers, you're like, I would much rather it be grilled. It's how Which is you why were... we bought the Kamado Joe, is so that we can have both experiences. It's how you were raised. My mother was raised, when, her, when they would make a hamburger, my grandmother made them always in a frying pan on mm -hmm. the stove. So if you ask my mom, how do you like your hamburger, she'll like put it on the stove. Cook right. it in a frying pan because that's how mama did it. Or Blackstone, which is pretty much the same thing because your grandmother made it in cast iron. Yeah. Of course, back then, they knew what to do, right? Because what did she make it in? A whole vat of bacon grease. Timing, too. You have to be, like, first of all, you have to be unafraid if you're working with grease and cast iron, right? right? I mean, I don't think she had any feeling on the top of her hand. But, um, yeah, and the timing mm -hmm. to get everything perfect. But I mean, my point is though, what, how did our ancestors eat that all of a sudden in the seventies and eighties and early nineties, we started demonizing fat, Yeah. but your grandmother, my grandmother, my grandparents were both from Germany on my dad's side. Everything is cooked in bacon grease and lard and they were pretty fit and healthy. It was funny. I can remember trying to introduce like low fat, low calorie things to my grandparents. Like, Hey, this is something new on the market. And we would eat it. They would eat it with me and be like, that is awesome. What a good snack. Okay, let's go ahead and make dinner now. You know, because that was just <laughs> belly wash as far as they were concerned. And they were right, turns right. out. That is not a real, that is not real food. I just heard the UPS truck. Yes, UPS. You know what that means? It means my phone is here. Wait, Honey. Wait, I'm just Look. I got my phone and my brand new GoPro. How excited are you? I, I guess you're gonna make me, Anthony just took my phone. <laughs> Can I have my phone back? You're gonna try to snag that thing. I will wait to open it until you are done premiering yes. the interview with Abby. So amazing. Joe. What? Let's go. Oh, Let's go, something. Joe. Very, very important. G.I. Joe. I know we want to film Kid on the Couch, but I have been waiting. But first. For you to new finish phone. up the premiere for Abby, which was amazing. So good. I don't normally ask people to share our videos, right. but I think that this could be so helpful for parents. Please share that video. Oh, you want the most satisfying thing in the world? Because they got rid of the plastic. You know, Apple's trying to be more environmentally conscious. So they got rid of the plastic wrapping. But you would only do this once. You only get to do this once. Ready? Yeah. Ooh, oh. it's yours. Now you're driving that car off the lot. Br Ooh, brand new color. Is it like a blue gray? Look at that. Oh. How about forget cute on the couch? I want to go play with my new phone. I know you do. Oh, no more plastic wrapping. What are you going to do? The next time you get a new phone and your mom. Leave this on. Well, then how are you going to see the phone? I'll Rachel just, always yes. likes to leave the plastic. I'm like, like you can't leave the plastic film. on there. It's like the big reveal. Okay, we're going to put this away. We're going to play with it later. Ooh, I even already have my new case. The case is ready to go. This is what I live with. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 133. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here you go. Um, since I got the iPhone. I get to open this? You're gonna get to open the iPad. I mean, it's pretty much just for our studio, but. Still. Here's the thing. So I was going back and forth if I wanted to get the, I love that. Mini. I want, I was going back and forth if I wanted to get the Wi-Fi version of the cellular. I ended up with the Wi-Fi because we already have hotspots. But they had this new color called Starlight. Well, you couldn't really tell what it was online. I really was going to get us the purple one, but you couldn't get it. 
the starlight turns out is like a, a pink, which doesn't uh, sound like starlight. That's at least the girl I told feel me. Like it would have she like said that the the on the website stars. it looks nothing like what you would think it is. See, that doesn't look pink. She told me it's pink. Oh no. It's kind of. I guess it's silver with a pinkish hue. I, I'm not getting the pink, and I'm a pinky girl. I don't know. That is pretty. But look at how look at the screen on the front. It's like almost the entire thing. Wow. You could act. People are using it as a phone. No, I seriously. Feel, I feel they, like that's where we're at. People are Hello? starting. Some people are not getting a phone, and they're getting that instead. And what pocket, what jean pocket is this going in? Anything but skinny jeans, probably. Or at least not for a woman, it wouldn't, but just, a lot of guys. Let me just put this in the side. So I could not find my phone. I was using my watch to ping my phone. Nowhere to be found. I finally used find my iPhone on my laptop to get driving directions from me to my phone. And it turns out that I left my phone on top of the chicken coop this morning, which is metal, and got my phone all kinds of hot. But thankfully, I found it, stuck it in the refrigerator, and then when it came back to life, I heard it beeping in the refrigerator. So, yeah, I can lose things in such a special way. Yeah, I need driving directions to find it. Rachel, what are you doing? Guard duty. Sure that uh, the babies have enough like free roaming ability without the older ladies coming after them. Um, where are the babies? They went this way because I have distracted the larger birds to come this way. Okay. Here we have a couple of hard boiled eggs that are a little bit past the sell by past date. Their prime. So you might want to give them give one to each set. Should probably try to feed them all together. Like nothing unifies people more than food. That's so true. I did notice that like we're still having a problem with uh, some of the focus on our talking head shots. So I have to apologize people. We're trying to figure out is it the lens or the camera. So put a different lens on and we'll see how that goes now. They want the yolk. They always want the yolk. See? I'll turn it this way and they're gonna come in. See how this one is like? <laughs> Bessie's like, stop holding out. Give me the good stuff. Very first message on my new iPhone. Deposit a new message. Extended <laughs> warranty serving since we have not gotten a response. We are giving you a final courtesy before we close out your file. How many final call? I get this same message every day. When are you going to get the hint? Close out my account already. I don't want your service. I, if I had a brand new car and needed an extended warranty, I wouldn't call you. So what are we having? We are having some leftovers. Well, it's, I don't know, you can call it some leftovers. We got brisket left. I've got some in here to eat for dinner later. And then I'm chopping some up and I've got the bacon wrap steak in there and we're gonna do eggs so we're gonna do like a, a brisket omelet on the blackstone so when i cook eggs on the blackstone what i like to do is i get the whole griddle heated up first then i turn it off because i don't like like the bottom of the eggs being kind of brown so we're gonna put a bunch of butter on why because we can so we're gonna get everything all buttered up We're gonna let the egg kind of cook a little bit and set up, and then we're gonna put all the brisket inside of it. So I have here six eggs and two egg yolks. Because Dr. Barry said eight more egg yolks than whites. That's a lot of meat. That is a lot of meat. I'm gonna kinda let it go like that. And then we're gonna cover it up and let the like, heat just kinda Heat it all up and cook it that way. That looks okay. good. Still need a little bit. We're just gonna kind of sit around and let it heat quickly. <sighs> Looking good. Got my new case on. Here's what I'm wondering about them. So this new phone, Apple Watch not paired. This new phone has um, 
like a macro. Like you can go, it's super, super close. So let's see. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh wow. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get in on the fat. Look at that. <laughs> Look at how much that focus does. Of course I'm bouncing around a lot. So we've noticed that there's some blurriness on some of the videos because like I said that our camera got knocked over. So we have a different lens on. So hopefully this fixes the issue. We hope so. Otherwise it's the camera. I will have to get that repaired. So here's what we got. We got some scrambled eggs, three eggs a piece plus a yolk a piece. And then we have some of the brisket. So the last of our bacon wrapped steak. Oh, we'll miss you bacon wrapped steak. And a few pieces, we're gonna make more. A few pieces of the Maria Emmerich bread and some of our, ooh, we're almost out. Some of our butter. Butter mayonnaise. Fortunately, not, but it's not butter, it's, it's mayonnaise, but I feel like it's butter and it tastes delicious. It's been a busy, busy morning. We've gotten a lot in. Mm. I'm making egg sand. Oh, you're, you're ahead of me already. Mm. <laughs> Is it good? Yes, let me tell you what's in your future. Deliciousness. Okay. So what you got in your mixer? We are making some more Maria Emmerich's bread. Uh, we have to add in the egg white protein still. So here's the thing. We used 12 egg whites for here. We put two of the yolks into our eggs because Dr. Barry said you're better off eating some extra yolks because yolks are perfectly one to one. So we got 10 yolks left. We're gonna put these in a glass container, put a cover on them so we can make sure they don't get all hard and disgusting. And we're gonna use some of these to make our butter mayonnaise. That looks pretty mixed. And we need, people are asking how we get this to not stick. I use the silicone pans. And I put this avocado oil on. I'll leave a link for it down below. And then we're just gonna go ahead and. Oh, I just. Oh, wait, first I lost my egg yolks into another bowl. That was good. Okay. Put this in here in the oven, 325 degrees for 30 minutes. Then what I do is when 30 minutes hit, I'm actually gonna turn off the oven but let it sit in there for a while. I'm also gonna try something that one of our subscribers said last night on the live stream. About 20 minutes in, I'm going to brush the top with some melted butter and so did see I, what that does. So did I hear you right? We actually still saved those egg yolks because yeah, they in fell another, into another they bowl. They fell into another bowl that, that happens to be in there. Okay, no cheating there. What? You know, I saw you last night. I saw the video when I was editing that somebody was sneaking brisket when my back was turned. Impossible. I, I've got digital proof. I don't think that's true. Joe? Let's go ahead and try that because I followed one of our subscribers and it looks different. In the live stream, one of our subscribers said to put some melted butter across the top of the crust. So let's go ahead and try a piece. Okay. Yeah, but you're not getting the whole thing. It's on only on the top of the crust. Oh, so this, oh, this part. No, 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 no. Here, so take this, okay. split that in half. I mean, I don't really notice a difference. I mean, I taste the butter, but it's good. Yeah. And that's always welcome, but I, mean, I don't know if it's needed. This is one of those, those breads that maybe you didn't cut the crust off on other breads, but you want to cut the crust off on this. I mean, this is, it's, pretty, I enjoy the crust. It's pretty, it's pretty tough. Just don't eat it without having somebody to watch you for choking. 
this is super soft. Yeah, but I don't notice the difference with the butter. I mean, I taste a little bit of the butter, but I don't notice enough of a difference to put a couple tablespoons of butter on. And remember, if you're adding butter, it is no longer protein sparing. Right, because there's fat. What you doing? I'm about to have uh, the premiere for day five. Mm -hmm. So I'm all ready. It looks like we have three people waiting and just saying hi to everybody. And what do you got over there? Well, I had to slice the bread. So <laughs> in typical cook fashion, do you do this? Like you have an entire meal before you serve people That's the right. food you're cooking. So in this case, it's not derailing because I sliced the bread. I'm having a couple of pieces of bread. I didn't even put any you know, of our mayonnaise are on it, but I did uh, just kind of dust it with some of the Redmond season salt because it is so stinking good. Now I do want to say some people have made comments about eating the bread. This bread has nothing added to it, but egg whites, egg white protein and cream of tartar. We're not adding any allulose. I don't even put Redmond season salt or any kind of Redmond salt in it when I make it. It's literally egg whites, egg white protein no powder, no nutritional yeast, no nothing. So we're literally eating egg whites and then we're covering it with our butter mayonnaise or butter to make sure that we're eating it like not as just some lean protein. Right. Wow, the lightning is bad. It is, we've got to wrangle the chickens. I know. Still stop squawking. Well, I did it. You did it? But I did it by hand. We did it! Like Dora the Explorer. You know what we need to did? What? Tape the recipe. Ooh, I like that consistency. Like I said, it was done by hand. Yep, that's the best yet. So you ever work on a recipe and you make it, I don't have a fork. Oh, did I not get you one? I just wow. got me one. Wow, I'm that wife. How? I am so sorry. <sighs> I stink, man. So as I was saying, you ever work on a recipe and then you made it, but then when you go to remake it, it doesn't work anymore? You're having a hard time duplicating it? That's what happened with my mayonnaise. I made it the first time in immersion blender and then I made it three more times and it kept breaking. Mm. So we don't want to do a video on it. So I've got the foolproof method. We're going to do a video on it. But the foolproof method is a little bit more difficult because the best way to get the butter mayonnaise to work is not with an immersion blender. It is not with a Vitamix. It is by hand. It is whisking it by hand. And like, it's actually the consistency of mayonnaise without refrigerating it. Yep. It just takes some time. You know what? It's worth it. So, Anthony and I went down to our game and uh, we got there six o'clock when we're supposed to get there. By the way, hopefully this lens, this is a different lens. My other lens is a better lens, but I'm hoping that this isn't blurry. If it's blurry down here, it's the camera. And then we're gonna get it fixed and we'll just have to shoot with a different camera because that's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, but, so we got down there at six o'clock. We're all talking. We're talking about all the coaches who we keep having to discipline and, and eject and stuff. We walk on the field at 6.30 and right as we walk through the gate, lightning detector goes off. And so we're like, ah. Oh. And we're like, oh, well, everything is like 9.8 miles away and we gotta go at 10 miles. And right. it's getting closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, I don't think we're playing. But see, here's the thing, in high school here in South Florida, on a school night, they have to be off the field by 11, but it's a Friday night. So I think it gets extended to 12, and basically, they must start the game by 9 o'clock, and then after 9 o'clock, they can start saying, well, shorten halftime, do running quarters, things like that. But you could potentially be but there we for a really And time. I have been on a field until after midnight for a high school game. 7.20, they come over and be like, we're just sending everybody home. I'm like, yes! Because my foot was already hurting. Right. I, I was going to the game because we're short officials and I you didn't said you'd be there. want to let down 
my fellow officials, I didn't want to let down the assigner, but I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. But I, I told them I'm like 60%, but I'll get through it. So I'm glad I didn't have to work. Me too. Um, we had to sit there for over an hour, but at least I didn't have to sit there. I, it could have been worse. They could have kept us there till nine o'clock or later before sending us home. You had time chatting with your buddy, Anthony. Mm -hmm. And while you were gone, I watched Mystery Men with Caleb mm -hmm. for like a little date night for us, which I love. Uh huh. And then of course, had to like drop in the Hungry Horde. Yep. Before we heard the chickens going absolutely bonkers well, outside. It is bad lightning out there. Well, Abigail's just having a fuss because she does not want these babies there. And she thinks that if she just keeps having a fit, they'll just go away. And they're not. No. That's part of your flock now. Right. Well, when I went out there to put them all away, of course, I turned on the patio light and the door hadn't closed. So all three of the other ones jumped down off the roost and came outside to investigate. Right. And they were all right around the babies. So they're not bothering the babies anymore. Which is good. The funny part is when you look in the hen house in the roost, there's one section that it's clear and obvious that they all go to one side because that's where all the poop is. The poop is only on one the side. The other side has no poop. So now we put them all in there and we're listening like, is there any fighting? Which there isn't. But now they've decided we're going to spread across the entire roost so the babies can't come up here. So the babies are sleeping on the floor in one of the nesting boxes. But I think it'll, it, it's, hey, they're not killing each other. You know what they're behaving like? They're behaving like the bus scene in Forrest Gump where it's like, taken, taken. Yeah. Like where there's no place for him to sit. Sit up straight. I'm so mad at them. So um, I don't think I'm going to eat all this. I just put a bunch of food on a plate. Rachel's eating leftover smash burgers. She's got three of them and a couple slices of bacon. I peeled the skin off the bacon. Thanks. Because some of the bacon, the bacon that we bought, uh, some of the ones they give you have skin, which is actually really good. Yeah. Unless you like your bacon crunchy, at which point it becomes almost impossible to chew. Like a rock. So uh, I've got one piece of bacon, I've got a bunch of brisket, and I'm going to have a piece of this bread with a little bit of this mayonnaise. Uh, how do you feel today? I feel great. You want to try to watch Jaws 2? <laughs> day three. Four. This is the fourth day we'll be trying to watch. I think, we, I think we should give up and find another movie. I think it's time for another movie. Having a good time with the sofa. Oh, it was really cool. So at my game, we were sitting there talking. This other guy comes along who's also a football official and a baseball guy. He moved here from West Virginia. And he's a doctor, so he was there tonight as the capacity of, like, field the doctor in case anybody got That's injured. Good. And uh, so we were just talking and stuff, and it's funny, he's a little off. But we were just talking about health, and, and we, I mentioned the statistics of the diabetes. Like because he's crazy, or he's so close to getting it right? He's so close to getting it oh, right. Okay. So we were talking, because I was talking to my crew chief, who is a hospital administrator, and I was talking about labs. And the fact that, like, we're getting all of our labs done for, like, 50 bucks. But if you were to go to a hospital, it's, like, 500 And he was actually telling me the reason it's 500 is because we charge 500 because usually when we do labs, the insurance companies give us, like, 10%. So there so you go. So we have to charge a now lot you're of back money. At 50. He's like, we have to charge a whole ton of money. And we're lucky if we get a 10% of that money actually back from the insurance company. It's, so it's, 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 like, just ridiculous. Anyway... And the guy chimed in and we were talking about like the kids with diabetes and stuff like that. And somehow it came around to, he was saying like, you know, my patients come in and they're like, I gave up the cake and I gave up this. And he was like, but have you looked at your lunch? Like how much are you eating? What are you eating? And he's like, you know, you go to these restaurants and they give you a little bit of salad and they give you a little bit of chicken and then they give you an entire bowl of rice. And he's like, what nobody understands is all of that rice. It's not a sugar problem. It's a glucose problem. There you go. And, and I'm like, oh, and he's like, you're better off eating sugar. And I'm like, oh, which in a way he's right, because at least you know what you're eating. That, you know, he's like the, the sugar, you eat the sugar, it's gone. But what people don't realize is that all of the starches and the rices, they turn into glucose mm -hmm. and they think they're eating healthy and they're not. But you know what? I'm completely fine for him to start those discussions because I don't think there's anybody that is celebrating eating a ton of cake. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that there's anybody that can't get on board with your diet should not, com you know, be largely comprised of cake and ice cream, right. right? So if he can go for the carby side dishes and try to, you know, 
steer people away from that. Right. I think that is a great start. And, you know, yeah. he's so close. And he, he was like, I completely agree with the keto lifestyle except for he doesn't agree with eating saturated fat. So he's like... As he's I like, put mayonnaise on my He's hammer. like one foot in and one foot out. He's like, the worst thing in the world for you is coconut oil, and everybody uses coconut oil. And I'm like, no, the worst thing in the world is seed oil. But he's still stuck in the mentality of cholesterol is super important. But, so, but he, he's he's on the right track. We're heading in the right direction. And that's what was really awesome about like the whole conversation. And, and he, I bet you didn't punch him in the face. I did not. We had make a him peaceful think conversation. Think. I love that. And, you know, sometimes we're fighting for those rice side dishes and the mashed potatoes and things at a restaurant, french fries. That's the cheap stuff. Right. Of course they're going to make that bigger. If you're going out to eat, it's kind of like Dr. Berry when we were at the Brazilian steakhouse and he was like, don't bring the distraction meat. Yeah, that don't bring is, me the chicken and the sausage. But I don't like, want that stuff. The very expensive cuts of meat. So like if you're if you're getting, you know, a, a, a plate that's got two sides on it, they don't want to change that out for bacon. They well, don't want to change it out for meat. That costs a lot more think money. Think about when you go to a Chipotle, Chipotle charges extra for meat, mm -hmm. right? And by the way, here's a little hint. If, when you go there of your keto, you're gonna usually get a double portion of meat. Don't tell them you want double meat up front. You're gonna go, I want chicken. Let them put the entire scoop of chicken. You know what? I want a second scoop of chicken. Because if you tell them double chicken, they screw you on the meat. You have to tell them after the fact. But they don't ever charge for extra rice. They don't even charge for extra vegetables a lot of time. What do you get for free? What do they charge for? Guacamole and meat. The stuff that we eat. Yep. It's not a coincidence because that's yep. the good stuff. That's right. What do they give freely at just about every restaurant you go to? Big thing of bread. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's amazing, right? They have come, you know, perfected. Especially all you can eat places. Bread. They're really good at making you like sweet, buttery bread because that is cheap. That right. is the cheap stuff. So it's always interesting that it's like we're fighting so hard to keep the cheap stuff. That's right. And we're pushing away from the things of value. The restaurants even know they're things of value. That's right. So, Well, that's going to be the end of day six. We're six days in, right? Day, The end of day six. Let yeah. us know how you guys are doing if you're following along in the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new delicious meal, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.